Hello everybody, I have 15 minutes to do this series review because I have to return the book in about 15 minutes. So let's go. I originally thought against doing a series review for this series, but uh, honestly, this is one of my favorite series ever. And even though there's only two or three books within the series, I thought it would be worth your time to really put some time into creating a review that makes me explain why I like the series as a whole, because I've reviewed each of these books in the past, um, but I haven't reviewed all of them together, which is why I really want to talk about it, because there's a different experience for each type of reading that you do. If you just read one of the books, you're going to get a different experience than if you read both of the books, or if you read all three of these books and uh, are waiting for the third book. How could this happen? You know, there's a lot of different experiences going on, so I want to go ahead and first review each of the books individually, and then go ahead and give you my thoughts overall, as well as all the nitty gritty stuff. Book one, The Name of the Wind. This is, I think, my favorite book in this entire series. I've, this is the only one I've rated five stars because I really thought that this is one of my favorite books that I've ever read. You come into this book with very few expectations. The only expectation you have is that this is going to be a great story. And I think that that is why the story is as famous as it is. This is one of the greatest stories I've ever read. Not because it's magnificent, not because it's it's unbelievable, but because it's so well put together that it's such a beautifully put together story with the proper story structures, with specific characters for specific motivations. We have all of these different uh, problems, obstacles that the main character comes into, and then numerous other parts where it feels like Deus Ex Machina, like stuff like that. That's just you usually don't see, you know, all of these things together. And if you do see all of these things together, there's certain things that feel very out of place. However, in this book, every single story aspect feels perfectly put within this actual story. So that's why I love it so much. I think that it's probably one of the best stories I've ever read. Maybe not the most emotionally Im impactful, maybe not the most incredible plot, but it is the best story I've read in the last two years. Next is The Wise Man's Fear. This one I rated four stars because it was absolutely fantastic until we got to a certain small chunk uh, close to the end of the book. And at that chunk, I was extremely uh, dissatisfied with what the author had done in terms of structure. There's one certain plot point that I really didn't think was going to happen, although it was slightly foreshadowed, so I have to give it that. Um, but then we were kind of like in the middle of doing something else, and then this plot point was just stuck in there. And I really was looking forward to the next plot point. And so this plot point felt extremely out of place. It was not a bad plot point. It wasn't the worst plot point I've ever seen, but it's not a very good plot point. It's, it's okay at best. And it was in the middle of one of my favorite uh, resolutions to a plot point that I've ever seen in like a book. So I was really, really upset by that. And there was like a hundred pages of just this annoying stuff going on. And you know, we've got all the other things from the name of the wind that's also in here. I think that the story structure is incredible, except for that point, I think that the characters are, are amazing. I think that the way that the author puts in Deus Ex Machina as well as a uh, struggle to attain even the smallest source of prize, of money, of whatever, I think that those are all perfectly placed and very believable within the story. But here we just have that one chunk that's extremely annoying and I can't give it a three stars for that because I still think it's one of the best books I've read in the last two years. But still, I have to deduct something because it was extremely dissatisfying. And then if you're wondering what this book is, it's book 2.5. So you don't, there's the main trilogy, one, two, uh, and then the third one has not been released. In between two and three, this has been released, which is just a novella. I think it's my least favorite one. It's a three out of five, which means I still like really like it. I, I really, really like this book because I think that the story that is told, even though it's not a very good story, is told so well that it's already easy for me to get invested in it. Now, it's not very easy to get invested in because there's so little of a story, but it's enough to make me care about it while I'm reading. And I think that that's a very, very good way of explaining this. This book is, for me, a similar, uh, similar to Oathbringer, which I didn't like. I didn't really like it overall. I, I put down the book. Every time I put down the book, I didn't care for it. And then it was really hard for me to pick it back up. That's very similar to this. While I was reading it, I thought it was a great book. It, it was a really, really good book. But when I put it down, when I was pulled out of that atmosphere, there's really nothing left to think about. There's no character that you really want to succeed. There's nothing, uh, there's no real problem here that you want to see solved because the biggest problem here is that she loses some soap and that's kind of the big, the big problem within the story. Not the big problem, but one of the many small problems. And because of that, it just feels very uh, unnecessary um, in this book as a whole, you could just not read this book and it wouldn't matter. But I think that it's a very nice addition and I will include this within the series review just so that you understand my entire scope of Temerant. So this is obviously the order that I uh, recommend that you read them in and it's also the best to worst order in, in my opinion. Um, we're waiting for Doors of Stone. So if you don't want to finish unfinished series, don't read this. We've been waiting for, I think it's been nine years or something and we're still waiting. And I, like nine years for me is a lot because I was like in primary school in nine years ago. So it's kind of crazy. And as well as my 
like, I, I know a lot of people that are very, very close to me that were born before the last book was put out. Like, it's, it's really, really weird. To get into the meat and potatoes of why you should read Cameron's stories, why you should read the King Killer stories, there's very few things that are tossed around to talk about it being the greatest. First of all, I would like to compare it to Sanderson because I have just read Oathbringer and I'm about to do a series review for Stormlight as well. So I will be comparing those a bit. So I assume that you've read maybe one of those or maybe both of those. If you haven't, don't worry, I'll be explaining them anyway. But I just think that this will be a very good way to get my point across. First thing first, Patrick Rothfuss is extremely praised for his prose. And obviously I agree. I think that these stories are the most beautiful stories I've read since Shakespeare. They're absolutely masterfully done. It seems like he's, he says that he goes over these drafts like at least 80 times, at least 80 times in order to make them this good. And these books are not short, like they're a thousand pages long. Going over these 80 times, that's crazy to me. So you understand how he does this so well. He puts so much into his prose. Uh, for example, meter. He puts meter into his stories to make it so that certain segments flow very well and certain other segments feel like cacophonies. They're very disjointed. And so stuff like that, that makes Patrick such an expert in prose makes this story such a pleasure to read. And it's just, that's that's obviously the biggest thing. Everybody talks about this, so I won't go any further. That is one of the things I love most about this story, but there's another thing that I do want to mention a little bit more, which is his storytelling ability. Now, this is where I really talk about Sanderson. Well, if I talk about prose, Sanderson has almost nothing in the name of prose. Like, it's just pathetic, uh, Sanderson compared to Rothfuss, but I, I give it to that. He's not aiming for good prose, so I I'm not gonna talk about that too much. But in terms of storytelling ability, I believe that Patrick's storytelling ability is unbelievably amazing considering what type of story he's making. Usually when you have storytelling ability, it doesn't translate well into fantasy. Uh, obviously the best fantasy have great storytelling abilities, but not many fantasy stories do that. Usually when you read a fantasy, the focus is on world building, on plot, or in terms of character, and not in terms of story as a whole, not in terms of overall cohesiveness. And King Killer, I think, is probably the most cohesive story I've ever read. You read the first book and you really feel like this is the beginning of an incredible journey. You see the end in sight, you see what Quoth is going to become, you see how he's going to achieve it, and you just want to see that journey unravel, all these small little obstacles on the way, just see how it becomes bigger and bigger, and how he eventually achieves this incredible thing that we were promised right at the beginning. It's such an amazing capsule of an amazing story that is really going to be, it's really well foreshadowed. However, it's not very well foreshadowed what is going to happen, and that's a good thing because we, I'm very, very excited for Doors of Stone. I cannot wait for the next story because I know it's going to just build on these two stories. It's not going to be something else entirely. We have Kuroth always being the exact same person. We see the story, uh, or the character at least, the character arc move in a perfect way that all these three books are going to fit together incredibly. It's not going to feel like there's one specific character arc going on through the entire thing. It's going to be numerous, very small character arcs because of the nature of the actual uh, heroic story adventure. Um, and this is the heroic fantasy adventure. It's not an epic fantasy, which is very interesting because I really enjoy epic fantasy. But I've realized here that if you can tell a fantasy story with a character that I am absolutely in love with, then you will have me by the neck, man. You're going to have me really, really, really down for this story because it's not just a world. It's not just a universe. It's not just a mythos. Although those things are there, this, it does have incredible of all of those. What's really incredible is this guy's journey. This one man who's going to become the greatest magician of all time. And you see him from from a very, very young age, all of this tragedy, all of this obstacle, all of this hardship, you see him progress, work hard, become better, learn mysteries, unravel mysteries, fight dragons. You see this guy grow up to become one of the greatest men that have ever lived within this book. And I just find that unbelievably fascinating from a storytelling point of view. It's incredible how he does that. It's usually not done like this. Now, like I said, I am gonna compare this to Sanderson because uh, I have read Oathbringer just now. And what I do wanna say is, while Stormlight does have incredible plot, I think that it has maybe the best plot I've ever read, it does not have the storytelling ability of Kingkiller. I think that uh, pe people specifically don't like the characters in Kingkiller, and they don't find the plot overwhelmingly uh, epic or anything out of norm for an epic fantasy book. But you have to look at it in context of a heroic fantasy book. That's not the point. It's not trying to create the greatest plot in all of history. Although it's a very good plot. Everyone seems to agree it's a very good plot. It's just that the storytelling ability overall, the story that is being told, I think it's just so well told and it's so well imagined that I am speechless for it. While in Stormlight, the first book, we literally don't know what the end is. We, we don't even begin to learn what the end of the series is going to be like. And I just think that the characters as well, uh, compared to the characters in Kingkiller, are very, very neck and neck. While, and, and that's a very important thing to, to notice because Kingkiller is two books, on average, maybe 900 pages or 800 pages. Stormlight is three books, planned to be 10 books, 
uh, with an average of maybe 1100 pages. So you have to understand that I think even though the characters are roughly the same so far, Kingkiller has more character work in a smaller amount of time versus Stormlight, which has more characters and obviously it's going to take longer. But I still think that all of the characters are so basic. I've seen them a million times already, the most of them anyway, two or three of them, uh, they're very incredibly new and, and engaging. But even these people, they take a very, very long time to create a character arc because I see a very specific, one specific change within the first to third books. And that seems to be the main problem. That's why I, I say that it is, while the plot itself is incredible in, in Stormlight, it does not have that density, that complexity that Kingkiller has. And that brings me to my final point, the complexity of Kingkiller. If you've seen Patrick's many, many interviews, you know very well that he puts a lot into the books. If you've read his books multiple times, you know that he puts a lot into the story. It's not just a bunch of plot stuff. I think that its plot alone and its character alone are unbelievably complex that it makes up for any lack of complexity it has within the world building. Because the world building, it's not complex. It's still really good. I, I do believe it to be really good. It's a So far, I think it's a pretty soft magic system, but it's a very engaging soft magic system. And what happens in King Killer is that all this complexity within the actual plot itself are really drawn forth. And that's so interesting to me because you're able to read these books multiple times and you're able to love it each time even more because of the amount of things that you understand after finishing the story and you come back. And that just adds so many layers of complexity, so much layers of subtlety. There's so much within King Killer that are, you know how many theories there are on King Killer? There are so many theories in King Killer. It's one of the most theorized series that I've ever seen. While Stormlight, it's been around for roughly the same amount, maybe three years shorter time, but that, but there's more books, right? The amount of complexity in King Killer is overwhelming. It's, it's incredible. It just adds so much to the, to the story. There's so many thematic moments. There's so many com complex character moments and plot moments and, uh, and uh, world building re reveals. So much stuff like that, that just adds so much to the complexity makes, makes it, I, in my, in my opinion, it does make it a higher form of literature. It, it really is something that you can dissect, that you can go into and really learn from. While Stormlight, it's a lot of fun. You know, that's all I can say. It's fun, but it just doesn't have all this stuff. And that's what I really want to push forth in this review. Many people compare these two series. I think majority of people, Stormlight does have a higher rating than uh, King Killer, and that's fine. I don't really, I don't really mind that because I, I don't think that, King, that Stormlight is bad, obviously. I think that it's a three to four stars. It's, it's a good, really good story. But I believe that King Killer is probably one of the best fantasies that I've ever read in my life. Just because of the amount of complexity, because of the amount of density and plot and character, while Stormlight is just kind of, it's like, it's its a thousand pages. Do whatever you want. There's too much that can be condensed that isn't condensed, and you will not find that problem with King Killer. And you can see that I'm hating on Stormlight a little bit. That's because I'm preparing for the review, and I'm really trying to get my thoughts straight on that as well. But I, I do love uh, Stormlight as well. I do think it's for a different audience, so that's, I'm gonna leave it at that, right? But King Killer is just perfect for, I think, a wider variety of people. So that that's where my thoughts are. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope you enjoyed the series review. If you did, please hit that like button. If you like King Killer or you like Stormlight, you know, let me know in the comments down below about your thoughts on both of these. Compare them. I would love to have a conversation. If you did like King Killer, uh, you know, leave it a like. Let's see how many people like King Killer. Yeah, boys, let's do that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this review. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye. As you can see up here, I do actually have a coat poster uh, from the King Killer. Um, well, this this might be well to show you how much I love this series. It's it's one of my biggest inspirations. And uh, down here, actually, here, 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 we do have a Stormlight poster. Uh, it's smaller because I think Stormlight is garbage.